Hi, John Helfen here. Uh, today I wanted to do something a little different than my traditional videos. Um, I had somebody ask me how to create a cam and a cam follower in Inventor and how hard it would be to create an animation of that. So today I wanted to show that process in Inventor, but I also wanted to show uh, the connection that you can make with Autodesk Showcase and Inventor. Uh, Autodesk Showcase um, is a rendering system that when connected with Inventor will read a drive constraint out of Inventor and automatically create an animation based on that drive constraint. Then you can take advantage of Inventor and the uh, ease of use and power of Showcase uh, as well. So there's an advantage to using both products together. Uh, you could also record right from the drive constraint dialog box, which I'll call out during the demonstration, or you could do this in Inventor Studio right from within Inventor if for some reason you don't have access to Showcase. But overall, um, I think there's a huge advantage and, and it's pretty easy to use. And so the goal of this video is to walk you through that process. To get started, we will start a new assembly. And within the assembly, we're going to need three parts. We're going to need a cam holder or a part to mount everything to. Um, and then we'll need the cam and, of course, the follower. So we'll start out by creating the cam holder. And we will select an origin plane to start sketching on. I'm going to use the XY plane here. Um, we'll start with something really simple. I mean, your designs might be more fancy than this, but I am going to create a 6x6 six six rectangle that we're going to extrude a quarter inch thick. Um, I hit E on my keyboard. We'll automatically finish the sketch and get into extrude for those who don't know it. Um, now I'm going to sketch a couple of circles here, um, 0.25 diameter, so quarter inch diameter holes uh, or circles that we're going to use to extrude and create pins that we can mount to. Uh, again, E on the keyboard extrude or finishes the sketch and gets into extrude. And I'll select these and yeah, three quarters of an inch. It doesn't really matter. That's plenty for what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to turn on my edges just so you can see a little more clearly as we start to assemble some things. Uh, but now we've got our holder. Next we need our cam. So we're going to start out with the cam. Um, let's um, On the design tab in Inventor, uh, there's a power transmission section where you can create spur gears and shafts. But what we're focused on are cams. Now we have the option to do cylindrical cams and linear cams, but we're going to focus on disc cams. And I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. Oh, got to save my assembly. Um, I'm not going to get into detail on the design accelerator. It's a very cool tool uh, for creating very accurate cams and doing all kinds of testing and simulation and things like that. Um, but all I want is a basic cam, you know, because uh, all we're doing is setting up some basic motion here. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to select a cylindrical face to place the cam on. I'm going to select the face to start from, and I'm just going to leave the defaults. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to create my cam. And it's not a fancy cam, but it does what I need it to do. So if I click and drag, it rotates the way it's supposed to, um, which is good. Now, with anything like a cam or a gear that we create in Inventor, um, you can always go edit that and make adjustments to it. So in this case, I'm going to real quick sketch on this face, and I'm going to project the pin that that's mounted to to the face there so that we can cut a hole where, you know, so it looks a little, a little more reasonable. So I'm going to go cut through, I'm going to hit return and return to get back up to the model. I'm going to delete this mate constraint and add a flush constraint. So I'm going to take uh, flush constraint and mount that up so it does the same thing. It's just now you can see the pin sticking through the cam. All right, so now we have the motion working the way we want when we click and drag it. What we need to do now is create a constraint that will drive the motion without us clicking on it and dragging it. We can do that with an angle constraint. So I'm going to right click and bring up my constraints dialog again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to select angle. I'm going to select the first solution here and I am going to rotate a little bit. I'm going to select the vertical work plane that runs through the cam and the side of this cam holder. And it's set up to zero degrees. So what that did was it took the work plane that runs through the center and made zero degrees angle of, you know, between the two faces that I selected. So now in the browser, I have an angle constraint. And if I right click on it and hit drive constraint, I get the drive constraint dialog. And here I can set up how I want to drive this. Um, I'm going to start with zero degrees. And instead of 
10 degrees. I'm going to make it do, let's do 1080. So a few revolutions. Um, instead of just 360, we're going to do 1080. Um, I'm going to expand the options here with the little double arrow. And you have the option to say, change the repetitions. So you could just do right from the start to the end. Or you can cycle back and forth from the start to the end and back to the start. And I'm going to do that twice. Uh, just to give me a little extra time that it'll work. And if I hit play... You can see that it runs that motion and in the title bar you can see what it's doing is changing that degree you know in one degree increments and just watching the motion happen so you can if you want to speed things up you can change the degrees to 10 you know or you can adjust it to whatever you want I'm gonna stick with one and now that I've got all these numbers set up I'm gonna hit cancel which puts the drive constraint back to zero right where it was but the all the values remain in that dialog box the way you set them up now that we've got the motion set up, the one other thing I want to do with the constraint is I'm going to rename it. And this is for when we want to whoops, when we want to bring it into showcase. Knowing the name of the angle that's driving the motion will just make it easier so that you can bring that in right away. So next we need to create our follower. And I'm going to create a new model. Um, I'm going to call this follower. And I will just select the cylindrical face here. It doesn't matter what face you pick, really. Um, I am going to project the circle to this sketch. And then I'm going to create another circle here to start our follower component. And last, we will sketch in the remaining parts of this follower. So I'm just going to draw a tangent line off the top of that. I'm going to roughly just draw this line over to the center of the cam uh, the cam itself. And then from the end, I'm going to left-click and drag off the end to create the arc. And then left-click and drag again to complete that arc. And I'm just going to connect it back to the starting point. And I'm not going to put dimensions on it. It's not a part modeling tutorial. I just want to create a part that I can, I can use for this follower. Um, so I'm going to extrude that a quarter inch and return to the model. Or to the assembly. So now what I have is this part floating out in space. So let's constrain that real quick. We'll put a mate constraint between the axis of the hole and the axis of this pin. We'll apply that. And next I want to make add a constraint for the front face of the follower to the front face of the cam. And right now it's in the mate solution, so it's mating those faces. I want them to be flush, so I'll switch to the flush solution. And now it flips it back over and these two faces are in line with each other. And now if I click and drag, you can see the motion works the way it's supposed to. All right, so the last component that we need to do is we need to add the follower or the transitional constraint that will allow this follower to follow the cam. So again, I'm going to get back into my constraints dialog box, and I am going to select the tra uh, transitional tab. And on this tab, this is where you essentially create cam followers. Um, all you have to do is select the face you want to follow on each part, and it will connect them. Now with that transitional constraint, you can see it here in the browser, I'm ready to actually see the motion take place. So if I right click on my drive constraint that we created earlier, I can hit drive constraint and all my settings are remain the same. And when I hit play, my cam follows my, or my follower follows the cam now. And it'll do that for, you know, 1080 degrees, 1080 degrees. And then it'll return, it'll cycle back and return in the other direction because we have the oh nope I still have it on start end so it's just cycling through there twice so it just ran a couple of different loops so that's good now that we have this motion set up in this dialog box if you hit this record button you could record this to a movie just as it is um, which in most in, in well most many cases anyway that'll be plenty um, for just showing motion um, that'd be good but what we want to do is save this assembly and bring it into Showcase. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show this um, or save this file and then we'll bring up Showcase to be ready to import that model. So if we switch over to Showcase now, you can see we're on the New Scene dialog box. And one of the options is to open, create a new scene with Inventor. On this dialog box, we have a couple options we can set. If you have a project file set up and you have your files in different folders and things like that, 
you can point to the inventor project file and showcase will use the project file to find all the files that are in the assembly in this case I know that all my parts are in one folder so I'm not gonna bother with the project file I am gonna use this create behavior from constraint option and I put in already the drive angle which is the name of the angle that is driving the motion in the inventor file and if you hit continue it'll import well you gotta pick the file let's pick our cam assembly and I'm just gonna do all-purpose default settings and what it's gonna do is it's gonna import all the files into showcase and it's gonna automatically build the animation based on that drive constraint so that we can use that to make motion and things like that and renderings now we have the model in showcase and if we rotate around you can see some of the background I don't really like this background so right off the bat I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard and bring up the environments I'm gonna change to the ID bloom environment which is a pretty standard environment that just has a nice look and feel um, it's one I use often and I'm gonna delete the shots that come up by default because um, I want to create my own um, but let's start out by let's add a couple add a little color to this um, I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard to bring up the materials and I'm just gonna go into the car paint and I'm gonna select this part and let's see let's make this green and let's check that let's make that green and then let's make the back face let's do a red yeah that's good enough I mean it, it doesn't have to be all that fancy you can see reflections on it I just wanted to add some color to it just to show, show you can do it again I'm sure your designs will be much more fancy than mine so let's shut down the materials um, next what we want to look at is if you hit B on your keyboard it'll bring up the behaviors and you'll have a behavior already set up here which it, it did during the import and it is essentially an animation just like you saw before of the drive constraint working but it's in showcase and has photorealistic renderings and has some advantages um, you know for ease of use for creating camera shots and things like that so now that we have that motion I'm gonna hit and stop and I'm gonna reset this back to the beginning I have the behavior here set up I've got my shots window open if you don't it's T on your keyboard to bring it up um, and I'm gonna create a couple of shots I'm gonna start out by I'm gonna get this into a position where I want to start at right so I might start zoomed out a little bit and I'm gonna create a start to end shot so under the create options you have start to end and within this dialog it shows you the image where it's gonna start and it shows you the image where it's gonna end and the, to change the end point all you have to do is use your standard navigation tools which is like your wheel mouse or your scroll wheel on your mouse um, and your middle mouse button for pan and zoom and shift and middle mouse button actually lets you get rotate so I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a bit here and then I'm gonna hit reset end which you can see a preview of what that did it kinda just zooms in a little bit closer and it pans a little bit at the same time which is fine and I'm gonna call this zoom right because essentially what we're doing here is zooming in on the model and I'm gonna close that so now we have one shot created that's a zoom next I'm gonna create another shot but this time I'm gonna start where this last one ended and maybe I'm gonna rotate a little bit we get the nice reflection and I'm gonna pan up a little bit and then I'll I'll maybe look like we're looking up at it a little bit now I'm gonna reset the endpoint so now I can preview this and see how that looks and I rotate and I see the reflection run across the parts that's good for what I want and this one I'm gonna call rotate now that I have these two views created or these two shots created I'm gonna hit U on my keyboard which is storyboard and you can find all this stuff too if you hover over these menus or bring up the menus you know when I talk about shortcut keys here's material library library is M on your keyboard um, environments is E um, here under the story you've got alternative views B is behavior so if you forget any of these you can always come back and just look at these shortcuts there's not too many of them so it's pretty easy to find um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this behavior I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say add the current add to the current storyboard slide which you can see my storyboard slide selected up here and I'm gonna say play this from the start play it forward from the start and there's a bunch of options here but I'm just gonna select that one and then I'm gonna also add this shot first shot the zoom shot to the current slide and I'm also gonna right click and add the rotate to the current storyboard what that does for me is allows me to hit play and do all of those in combination it's gonna play the animation it's gonna do the zoom and it's gonna go from one the zoom and then into the rotate all in one storyboard slide 
And the nice thing for that is, I'm gonna stop this, and let's reset it, whoops, let's reset it, is um, I can now export that as a movie. So I'm gonna hit U on my keyboard to hide my storyboard, B on my keyboard to hide behaviors, and T on my keyboard to hide shots. And under the file menu, you have save as movie. I'm going to just do 640 by 480. Um, 24 frames per second is fine for what we're doing here. You can adjust it as you need. And under the create a movie of drop down box, I'm going to select slide default, which I could have named that slide and I didn't. Um, if you've got more slides than just the one, you're going to want to name them. Uh, but I'm just going to do an animation of that slide itself, which is a combination of the behavior and the two shots happening all at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to just hit save movie and I'm going to call this cam. And I think I have one on my desktop already. So yep, I'll overwrite that. Oh, it looks like I already have that open in the background. So I'm going to close that and let's try this one more time. Cam. And I'm going to replace it. And now it's going to run through that animation and it's going to record the entire process to a video. If you want to change the length of this animation, that's controlled again through your drive constraint dialog box in Inventor. So I set it to 1080 as the number of degrees it's going to spin. Um, you can change that to a higher or a lower number to adjust based on your needs. I would keep in mind that the longer it gets, the longer the animation takes. Um, you know, so if you've got a project due, don't wait till the last minute to figure out how long it's going to take to render. It's worth trying ahead of time just to make sure you know how long it takes. So essentially now on my desktop, if I hit my cam.avi file, you can see the animation it just created. Now it's not the best quality. I kept all the defaults and I just needed it really quickly to, you know, render out something so that I could show you. But you can turn on full ray tracing and everything and adjust settings so shadows are perfect and um, of course, that's going to increase the time it takes to create the file, but on the other hand, um, you get nicer quality. So it depends on what your needs are, uh, but hopefully this was helpful for everybody. I uh, look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thanks.